Hey folks, Jeff here at Back to Country. We're back in the city right now, but that don't mean we ain't doing stuff. So today, uh, we're gonna do something, uh, I guess we'll call it throwback day. So where we're throwing back to is, oh, I don't know, a few years maybe, since we did anything with sourdough. Well, we're getting ready to go back to the property and it's always nice to take a fresh loaf of sourdough bread. So I figured, hey, we better get that starter going. So I went in the refrigerator, dug all the way to the back, and I found my starter. Well, guess what? I haven't touched this starter in like a year, maybe longer. So a lot of people are probably wondering, is that starter even any good? If you haven't touched your starter in a year and it's just been sitting in the back of your fridge, it's probably rotten and gross and dead and who knows what. Well, we're gonna find out. So first thing I do is open up this starter and I look inside of it and it looks like this disgusting brown mush kind of stuff, I don't know. So most people would take one look at that and be inclined to throw it right in the trash. But here's the thing, if you look close, there ain't no mildew, there ain't no kind of fungus growing, there's nothing in there. What you're seeing is you're just seeing the top of the, the flower base, which typically we use rye, and so that's a darker flower. And then you're seeing a bunch of liquid. And if you give it a whiff, man, whoo, it smells like pure alcohol. I mean, if I was an alcoholic, I could probably drink that and get pretty lit up. I don't know. I might even be able to pour it out and set it on fire or something. I have no idea. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour it down the sink. Because that alcohol, number one, I don't need it in my bread. It wouldn't hurt it. There ain't that much there. But uh, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to dump it out. So that's all I did. I just dumped that off the top. That alcohol is actually called hooch. Gee, hooch alcohol makes sense. Anyway, uh, what that is, is that's actually a byproduct of the yeast feeding on the sugars and everything. Uh, I don't know if that's like their urine or what. I mean, we're talking organisms here. Uh, but that's the byproduct is alcohol. And the good thing is that when it comes to your starter, which is flour, water, and yeast, uh, which we never added yeast, that's all natural yeast, that alcohol being on top actually creates a, a seal that protects it. And that's why we didn't see any kind of uh, mold, mildew, whatever growth in there, because that alcohol provides a cap over the starter. So once we've dumped that out, we're just going to give it a little stir and it's pretty thick because uh, it's like flour paste and there's not any uh, extra water or anything like that in there. Maybe some of it even evaporated off. I don't know. It's been sealed in this jar and it's been sitting in the fridge for a year. So the question is, if I feed it, will it come back to life? So if we pull the spatula out and look at it, it really just looks like a dark flour paste. All there is to it. So we want to make a, a, an active starter out of that. And the question is, is there any yeast left alive in there that can come back to life or not? We don't know. Since I do everything by weight when it comes to my uh, sourdough, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a starter here by weight. So I'm first gonna take a clean, empty mason jar. I put that on, it weighs 428 grams, but if I hit tear, it resets the scale to zero. And so what I wanna do is I wanna get out about 75 grams of this, I'm just gonna call it starter paste, muck, whatever.
could call it yeast excrement, but that's not really what it is. That's just a nasty thing to call it. <laughs> so that's 72 grams right there. Get a little bit more. So the reason I'm going with 75 grams is because I want to have uh, over 200 grams of starter when I'm done. So I just took out 75 grams of that starter. So what I'm hoping is that's got some yeast in there still that's uh, going to be active enough to get this going. And here I've got rye flour. I use rye flour uh, for my uh, starter always. That's what I feed it with. And uh, this particular rye flour I got off of, uh, I actually ordered it through Amazon. It's organic dark rye flour. And uh, it's pretty good stuff. So I'm going to go with uh, 75 grams of that, which means my total's going to be up to 150 grams. We're getting there. And there we go. So we got 150 grams now combined. And we're going to do another 75 grams of water which basically means now I'm gonna get it up to 225 grams total. This is just uh, room temperature. Oh, was it, I say 225, I went over because I was thinking, talking and not thinking. So I got 232 grams, a little extra water, but you know what, it ain't gonna hurt a thing. Next thing, all I gotta do is stir it up. Now, in all honesty, that extra water is probably gonna help it, and the reason is, is because most of the water is gone from that starter. I poured off the hooch, and, and uh, you know, I don't know if the water evaporates out of it or what, but there just wasn't a lot of water content left in it. It was pretty thick paste. And so this is actually coming out pretty thick as well. So that extra water just thins it out a little bit. And actually in this case, it's perfect because it's a pretty thick paste here as it is. I'm just trying to get it all stirred up here. Once I get it all stirred, then I just uh, clean up my jar a little bit. That's one thing I'll say about starters is always try to keep the sides and everything of your jar clean. So one of the big reasons that that starter, even though we haven't touched it in over a year, uh, it's all good because the sides were clean and the rest was protected by that alcohol cap. So if you leave your sides dirty, if anything's going to, uh, mildew, go bad, whatever, it'll be that stuff that's not under the alcohol cap. It's not being protected by that alcohol. And so to me, that's one of the big reasons why you want to keep your starter jars pretty clean on the sides. Now this one, we're actually going to use the starter once it's ready, provided it comes back to life, which I'm betting it will. Now I'll be honest, we've never done this before. We've never, I mean, I've left it for a few months, but Never did we have we left a starter untouched for over a year in the refrigerator. And uh, if I remember correctly, we haven't touched it since about 
March of last year. Does that sound right? Wanna, yes, you are correct. March of last year. And uh, we are halfway through April already. So Over a year, yes. We've been so busy. So <laughs> that's going to make it about 13 months or so since we've... This is going to be very interesting. Since we've touched this stuff. That means I haven't fed it. I haven't done anything to it. It's just been sitting in the back of the refrigerator, sealed up. And like I say, there's that layer of hooch that gets developed on the top. So uh, that's what protects it from spoiling. All right, so we've got uh, our jar. It's not perfectly cleaned up, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to use this stuff anyway. So that's our starter. If it's alive, then I'd say sometime tonight or tomorrow, it will come back to life. It'll start to get air bubbles, meaning that yeast is feeding on the sugars in this flour and it'll begin to grow and feed. And this will uh, start to expand and get bubbles in it. So if it's dead and there's no yeast, then nothing's gonna happen. And in theory, to bring it back to life, we would have to keep feeding it and it'd be like starting over, uh, trying to do a starter. And if you haven't seen our series on sourdough starters, go back, look through our videos and you can see that where we made maybe even this starter from scratch. Uh, I don't remember if it was this starter that we kept or the one before it, the older one. But uh, regardless, it's a good starter makes great sourdough and uh, I'm not going to uh, seal the lid. I'm just putting the lid on lightly and we'll leave it sitting on the countertop and we'll follow up and see what happens. Okay, folks. So 24 hours later and it's just starting to activate. It's been pretty slow going. We weren't sure at times if it was going to start up. But looking at it now, let me zoom in there. You see those little tiny air bubbles starting in there? And I saw a couple of bubbles on the surface as well. So that's exactly what happens when it starts. And also, it's just barely starting to rise. So I put that rubber band on there to mark the point, the starting point. And uh, actually the little, the rubber band was a little high in some areas and, and now it's rising above the edge of the rubber band there. So it's not dead, it's still going. So let's let it keep on doing its thing and see what happens. All right, folks, it's been about uh, 33 hours since we first fed this um as you saw in the video it did come back kind of started going about 24 hours later and then it uh doubled just like you would expect your starter to do when you feed it overnight it doubled and then it came back down meaning it had used up the resources basically and uh although it's still active and feeding you can see lots of bubbles in it they're small bubbles and it's no longer doubled. So uh, normally when you're gonna make a bread, you want your starter to be very active. So right now I'm going to feed this again uh, just to get it going good. And then I'm probably gonna get a loaf of bread started tonight. So I'm just gonna give it about uh, 50 grams of flour and uh, around the same of water. And that should be enough to, uh, to get it fired up again and ready to uh, make some bread.
All right. And yep, this time I got it exact. 50 grams. And hopefully I don't uh, mess up the water. Hundred grams exactly. Woohoo! <laughs> and now all I'm gonna do is uh, mix it up again. Cleaning up my sides here. So the bottom line, I think this is proof enough that you can indeed leave a starter alone for who knows how long. That was 13 months. We did absolutely nothing to it. It sat in the back of the refrigerator, dormant, whatever you want to call it. And we never fed it once. We never touched it. Probably got moved around once in a while just based on activity in the refrigerator. But uh, we didn't feed it. A lot of people think that you have to feed your starter uh, every few days and keep it very active. And that's true if you're making bread with it constantly. But the reality is um, the average person isn't going to be making a loaf of bread uh, every couple days. So to me, uh, if you keep your starter active, you either have to bake all the time or uh, you're going to be throwing away a lot of starter or giving it away or whatever. And uh, to be honest, that's just wasteful. So we don't do it that way. When we're making bread, we keep our starter active and we use it. And then it goes back in the refrigerator until we want to use it the next time. And in this case, we were real busy. We're going to stay busy. We didn't make bread for over a year. And uh, our starter sat there. And like I say, most people would have thrown it away and thought it was dead. We did not fed it again, came right back to life. Well, maybe a little slower than normal, but it did come back to life easy and it's good to go now. So there's the answer. Yes, you can leave it for a long time and it will come back. All right, folks, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell the next one, God bless. We'll see you on the next one.